the Jamar Chase situation. Now it's interesting because it's not just Chase. Like you can't pay everybody. Eventually right. somebody's got to go. So do you I, Chase is going to be there. Like I, I can't see Chase going anywhere. But what do they miss out because of that? Is Higgins gone? Like, what is your gut feeling on on the future of Chase and what that means maybe for roster construction down down the stretch here? Yeah, so with with Chase, I think Chase and Justin Jefferson are probably one and two, best, best two wide receivers in the league. Yeah. Uh, with his history with Burrow and with what they've been able to do and, and what Chase is on pace to do this year. I mean, it's crazy what he's being able to do. Um, I think that... Chase will get extended. They got two years. Next year, he'll be eligible to, to, to be extended. I'm sure they'll exercise his fifth-year option. Um, he's going to be one of the highest paid, if not the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. And I I would have loved, heading into the offseason, I would have said, you know, maybe Burrow takes a team-friendly deal. Nope, that didn't happen. Uh, so, yeah, keeping Chase means that you sacrifice Higgins. Um, and that's unfortunate. But, you know, there's no teams, there's not many teams that have two number one wide receivers and it's a luxury what we have it uh i'm hoping that they can use it to you know help make you know pay off big dividends or whatever this year um but yeah my guess is that that maybe higgins is tagged maybe and if not you know he walks uh if they struggle if they lose this weekend and i mean the trade deadlines i don't know if they lose this weekend i don't i doubt they trade them because it's still pretty early but yeah, I, I think that that the idea is they're going to keep Chase, and that just means Higgins is probably gone. Boyd's gone. That's that's already that's a done deal. So, yeah. but uh, my guess is is that, and I think wide receiver it's it's a it's an easier position to replace than a lot of other ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, not that there's just a Higgins replacement sitting around somewhere, but it's I just if you have to choose between the two of them, you got to go with Chase. So yeah, tag and trade too. I mean, you can still yeah. tag T Higgins and trade him. You know, that'll always that can always work out in your favor. You know, the other thing too that that I think a lot of people forget when you pay an elite quarterback. If you if you feel like you have an elite quarterback and they're young, then you have the luxury of kicking their money back and really freeing up a ton <laughs> of cap space. You you saw Cleveland do that this year with Deshaun Watson. Now, Sean Watson is not Deshaun Watson of old, but either way, because he has so much guaranteed money, they kick the can down the road. They free up 50 million in cap space just like that. Right. And that's something you can do with Burrow as well. Sure. It's something that you've seen the Chiefs do. It's something that you watched Tom Brady do his whole career. So there are ways to finagle it. If they really wanted to make it happen, maybe they could, you know, they would yeah. have to take a hit somewhere eventually, but maybe they can keep those two together if they really feel like that's something they want to do. So we'll see what happens with them. But man, Chase is, this is the first legit number one receiver that the 49ers are facing all year. And yeah. we'll see how it goes. It's not just Chase, it's Higgins as well. Higgins might be the second best receiver they've faced all year. But, you know, the secondary is in question right now in San Francisco. And now they've got two guys coming to town, really three and boy, that's like, okay, mm -hmm. You know, we're going to figure out what you're made of and we're going to figure it out real soon. So curious to see how this whole thing plays out. Brother Bob is a bit neutered right now in his comments. He doesn't even want to talk crap about the Bengals. He says, well, the it's Bungles, he's uh, <laughs> he's a little upset over the game yesterday. Frank Tom Ocean, member for seven months. Appreciate you says, love these shows during the week. Thank you both. Yeah, I mean, these are the these are the great, best shows right here. Official BNA Music says he's always effing open. He is, man. He's getting... Right. There was a game that he had like 19 targets. 19 targets? Bro, some yeah. quarterbacks don't even throw the ball 19 times in a game. 19 targets is insane. He was open catches. the whole time. The whole 15 time he was catches open. out of those 19 targets. <laughs> it's absolutely yeah. crazy. Uh, Matt says... With Bates gone, how's the secondary been? Oh, that's a really good question, actually. Yeah, how is the secondary been? So first I want to say that I wish Jesse, Jesse Bates the absolute best. I think everybody knew Jason Bates was going to be gone. We had Burrow to pay. We have Chase to pay. You know, they drafted Dax Hill. Um, and he's been great. I think Bates has three interceptions and a pick six. And he's, I mean, he's like, this, he's, he's great. He's um, one of the better safeties in the league. For oh, sure. absolutely. For sure. Uh, Dax Hill, you, you know, we went from the duo of Jesse Bates and Von Bell 
mm-hmm. uh, with a lot of experience. I, we traded that experience in and went for some athleticism. Dax Hill is a freak athlete, and they've used him all over the place. He's been very, very good. He's had a couple sacks. He's had interception. Uh, he's had a couple tackles for loss. He's been really, really good, but they line him up everywhere. And then Nick Scott has kind of played in the box. He's been all over the place too. Uh, so it allows Lou Anaruma to do some things that he couldn't do with Bates and Bell. You know, they played much more traditional, strong safety, free safety. And then he's rotating in Jordan Battle, who was drafted out of Alabama this year. Mm-hmm. So I'll say this. The secondary has been a pleasant surprise because it's been pretty good. But but they are prone to some mistakes. So they are extremely athletic. They're able to do some there. They're flying around the field. You know, I watched Dax Hill just move all the way across the field to break up a pass that he shouldn't have been able to get to. However, there are a couple communication issues, you know, things like that. Safety is kind of the quarterback of the defense. You know, you you see everything. And uh, if the communication isn't really good, and we're talking about a rookie, Nick Scott started just one season for the Rams. So this is just really year two for him as a starting uh, strong safety. Jordan Battle's a rookie. Uh, Dax Hill's not a rookie, but this is his first year starting. So it's, it's good. It's an athletic secondary. Um, Chidobe Wizzy is back, but you got DJ Turner, who's just a speed demon, who he's been playing really well. Uh, Cam Taylor Britt, I think, is going to have a uh, just uh, he's having a breakout season. He's mm-hmm. he's going to be a really good, really good, um, just big, aggressive um, defensive back. So I would say that it's it's more athletic. It's oh, man. It's more. It's a more athletic se- secondary that's a little bit capable of doing more things. It's also inexperienced, and they. I don't. Know, they struggle sometimes with communication. So, it's you know half dozen one way, six the other. It just kind of depends. I'm just rambling now. I, I mean, it's it's hard. <laughs> it's it's the it's really hard to kind of nail this down. It, it is. It's it's yeah. They've been they've had some really good plays and they've had a couple of really bad plays. So it's well, it just kind of depends on what happens. Yeah, the secondary, the way I see it, especially at the corner position, is one of those where you do want youth. I mean, it, yeah. it is a young man's position. It really mm-hmm. is. It, it's one where if you if you don't have youth there, you can get cooked. But then when it gets to the safety position, that's kind of where you want somebody that might yeah. be a little bit longer in the tooth and is a veteran and can kind of man things and keep it together. So I understand it seems like the whole secondary is a little bit young, very athletic. So they're going to grow into something probably pretty dang good. But this year in doing yeah. so, they're going to have some ups and downs. I, I totally get where you're coming sure. from. The the future of the position is really bright. I really do yeah. think they're going to have a really, really strong secondary for several years. It's just getting to that point. Getting to that point where you know the mental mistakes are going to go away. And we're not there yet. So Yeah, well, you got a good pass rush. So that's yeah, helpful. They do. They do. <laughs> that's very helpful. Uh, Brother Bob says, my blood bleeds Niner red, but my mind tells me we will have issues. How can we be confident seeing our defense and Purdy throwing two picks in a comeback? What is, I always like to ask this question too. What is the, uh, what is your thoughts? Because there's a real, there's really a mixed bag of thoughts when it comes to Brock Purdy, even Mm -hmm. within our fan base. Uh, You know, I'm, I'm kind of one of those guys that's more hesitant to like, say he's our franchise quarterback. Um, that pisses a lot of people off, but you know, that's just where I'm at with it. What is, what is like your thought looking across at the San Francisco 49ers and, and Brock Purdy? Like what, what do you think of him? What do you make of him? I, I, so, so like you said, before you kind of went live is, is a lot of people don't watch other teams and you know, yeah. I, I write about football and stuff like that, but I, I don't have like the NFL Sunday ticket. So I get to watch the Niners when they're on TV in Cincinnati. And yeah. they I mean, they were on last night. I was rooting for them like hell because I didn't want them to lose two games in a row before they came home. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But uh, I I mean, you, at this point, I it, you, it's really hard to say that he's not he's not the guy. You know, I, yeah. I, I think that he is. He's gone out there. He's Now, he's got an incredible team. You know, he's got yeah. CMC behind him. I know Debo's not healthy right now, but Brandon Ayuk. Uh, has really come on strong. He's, you know, showing he's a true number one receiver. You got George Kittle, who's, I mean, you got, you know, you got Kelsey and Kittle kind of one and one A, you know. Um, so you got a great team. You got a good defense. But Purdy, you know, he he's the guy that kind of manages it. I don't want to call him a game manager because I think he's better than that. But if, if you have a guy that's not going to screw it up too bad for you, 
You know what I mean? That's all you really need. If you have a really yeah. good team, I mean, look what the Bengals did with Andy Dalton. And I'm not saying that Andy Dalton and Brock Purdy are the same guy because some people would want to fight me for that. Um, but Andy Dalton came to Cincinnati, and we all know, you know who Andy Dalton is. Yeah, of course. You know, everyone knows who he is. But the Bengals went to the playoffs five years in a row with Andy Dalton. They didn't win any of those games. But they won the division. You know, you surround them with guys like A.J. Green and, you know, guys like that, that he's going to be good. And uh, I, I think Brock Purdy absolutely could be that guy. He may be better. He could be the next Tom Brady. In 20 years, everyone's going to be talking about, like, oh, my God, 31 teams passed on, you know, <laughs> Brock Purdy. But I, I, he's really he seems really good. He seems really good. I'm I'm excited for him. It's kind of a cool story, you know. Um, I don't know. It's it's pretty neat. I I don't see any reason to say he's not. He shouldn't be the franchise quarterback, you know. But I don't. I, again, I I haven't watched him obviously like you guys do.